Hello and welcome to Vesterhaninge, south of Stockholm, the place where I live. I'm out on my morning stroll around Vesterhaninge. It's a crispy morning, a little bit cold and snow outside as you see. Today I will talk about the Swedish politics of a non-alignment, that we're free from the military alliances and that we're supposed to be neutral in times of war. Is that really true? Have we been uh, free of military alliances for 200 years and neutral in times of war? Or is it a myth? We'll find out. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Swedish History Podcast and the episode about the Swedish neutrality and non-alignment policy and the historical background to it. Sweden's policy has been called a policy of neutrality. In practice, this means that the country must stand outside military alliances in peacetime in order to strive to be neutral in wartime. This is about to end since Sweden has applied to become a NATO member. 28 countries have approved so far and right now Sweden is still waiting for the Turkish and Hungarian parliaments to vote in favor of a Swedish NATO membership. So how come Sweden has been neutral and outside military alliances up to now? The reason for this policy can be found in the politics of 1812, which came into being in connection with the Napoleonic Wars. The Swedish king Gustav IV Adolf, who ruled Sweden in the early 19th century, was strongly against the French Revolution and the French Emperor Napoleon. This policy led to Sweden being attacked in 1808 by Russia, which at the time was allied with France. The situation was very dangerous for Sweden, which risked being split in half because France stood with an army in Denmark, ready to attack from the south, while Sweden was hard-pressed in the east. As a result of Sweden losing Finland to Russia, King Gustav IV Adolf was forced to resign in 1809. Sweden got a new constitution, and in 1810 the French general Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte was invited to become Crown Prince of Sweden. Bernadotte ran the day-to-day -day politics and policy-making at the time. He was called Crown Prince Karl Johan. The purpose of inviting one of the best generals from France was the Swedish hope that he would retake Finland. But Karl Johan had no emotional ties to the issue of Finland. He looked at the map, saw that Sweden and Russia had been fighting along the Finnish border for centuries and believed instead that Sweden should take Norway from Denmark. He thought that was the natural border. At first, everyone in Europe thought that Bernadotte was to be a French loyalist, since he had been a French general. But in early January 1812, France occupied the Swedish area in northern Germany, Swedish Pomerania. This shocked Sweden and made many of the countries opposed to France start to form an alliance against Napoleon. This would eventually lead to the fall of Napoleon. After the Napoleon big invasion of Russia in 1812, a meeting was set up between Karl Johan Bernadotte and the Russian Tsar Alexander. This was held in the Finnish town of Åbo, just recently one of the biggest cities of Sweden, but in 1812 a part of Russia. The meeting meant that Sweden and Russia would become allies against France. In this way, Bernadotte went against his own homeland. Now his primary aim was to take Norway. The year after, in 1813, Sweden was involved in the Battle of Leipzig against Napoleon. Karl Johan was now commander of the Northern Army, which was deployed against Napoleon at Leipzig. The battle in Leipzig was a disaster for Napoleon, and after the French defeat, Bernadotte wanted Norway to belong to Sweden and started to pressure the Norwegians. Norway was in a union with Denmark at the time, but Norwegians wanted independence. 
In 1814, Sweden went to war against Norway, a short war, but the result was that Norway left the union with Denmark and went into a union with Sweden instead, a union that lasted until 1905. This was the last war in which Sweden participated. After 1815, Bernadotte decided that Sweden would continue to have good relations with Russia and stay out of military alliances. The Swedish neutrality policy was now born, and this as a result of the 1812 politics. But now a question arises. Has Sweden really actively pursued a policy of maintaining a strict neutrality policy for more than 200 years? No, that is actually mostly a myth. It has rather been a matter of coincidences, of missed opportunities, of lateness and the result of various conflicting wills that have led to Sweden choosing to sit still in the boat rather than take any decisive steps in either direction. During the Crimean War, when France and Britain were fighting the Russians in the Baltic Sea, Sweden had a particularly pro-French king, Oscar I, the son of Carl Johan Bernadotte. And he was prepared to let Sweden participate in the war. There were preparations and planning made to become an ally to France and Britain. But there was a delay and the war ended before Sweden could join the alliance against Russia. And during the Franco-German War of 1870-71, the Swedish king Karl XV, grandson to Karl Johan and son of Oscar I, wanted to send Swedish troops to support France. But then it was the Swedish government that resisted, and the war ended, and Sweden stayed out of that war too. During World War II, Sweden actively supported Finland with military assistance against the Soviet Union and also traded with Nazi Germany and let the Nazi regime transport soldiers through the country. The transports ended in 1943 and the trading with Nazi Germany in 1944, when it was clear that Germany was about to lose the war. Maybe the policy was understandable at the time, since Germany was occupying surrounding countries around Sweden, but it was hardly very neutral. So the neutrality part is sure a myth, but the non-alignment part is not. Although Sweden stayed out of military alliances during the 19th century, mostly by coincidence. So if Sweden will join NATO in 2023, there will surely be history being written. Thanks for listening to the Swedish History Podcast. My name is Johan Rumin and follow my webpage at johanruminhistory.substack.com. See you next time. Bye for now.